This car is pissed off because the Toyota Prius, which it hates, has outsold every other hybrid in the world combined. Ford thinks that they've got the antidote. Let's drive the 2013 C-Max SEL Hybrid and check the tech. Now the first thing anybody asks me about the C-Max is, what is it? They hear it's a Prius killer. Ford's kind of been positioning it that way. Well, it sits somewhere between a Prius and the bigger Prius V in a number of different metrics. To begin with, this car can be had as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid, like a Prius. We have the standard hybrid today, by the way. It delivers MPG smack in between a Prius and a V. It costs about $900 more than the cheapest Prius. It's shorter than that car, but has more passenger volume than the big Prius V. It also has more front and rear legroom than either Prius or Prius V. It's the tallest, by the way. You probably spotted that already. It's also the heaviest by at least 333 pounds. Now inside of C-Max, first thing you notice is nice headroom. Because it's so damn tall, you get the benefits inside. We've got the panoramic roof over my head. It's optional, by the way, a la carte. Dashboard is very familiar. I've told you before I have an issue with the Darth Vader mask up here because all these eyebrows and cheek things here get in the way of me touching the screen. Now we have all the bells and whistles in this guy because we have a high trim car and pretty much all the tech options. As a result, communications, navigation, if I poke the lower left corner down here, if I can get my hand in there, you see our media choices, and they are many in this car. Obviously, you've got AM, FM. We have HD radio as part of an optional trim up. The USB jack, there's two of those, and you can use those, of course, for sticks or iPods. Here's my Droid phone on Bluetooth streaming and, of course, audio video inputs. MetaTag information is shown nice and big, good use of the real estate. That's very important for Bluetooth streaming because you want to know where you are and what you're playing. Unfortunately, it doesn't pull the tags all the time, but it's got lots of real estate when it says unknown. Now, because this car is a hybrid, we've got some fairly advanced efficiency gauges here on the left to show not just the usual fuel economy, but all kinds of things about charge assist, regeneration, charge level, things you'd expect, which Toyota tends to make much more front and center, kind of always up on that big center display. But in this car, they're tucked away and you can really reduce them down. And everything else in here looks like a Ford, not some different line of car. Other indicators. And unlike a Prius, there's no EV mode button or B selector on the shifter. Nothing to make you doubt you know how to drive it. Instead, you just put the thing in drive and drive it. Now, you do have a rocker switch here on the side of the shifter, which would typically be an overdrive lockout. In this car, it turns on this little icon that shows descent. And what that really makes you think is, oh, that's going to go for the kind of a descending grade gear. But that's not really what it's doing. It's going into higher regeneration mode, like Toyota's B position, but it's masquerading it as something that most drivers will understand. Now, we have package 303A. Cryptic, yes, but remember that number, because that brings in all the toys without any screwing around, which means the navigation with voice and traffic and weather, Sony sound instead of bass audio, HD radio with iTunes tagging. You might like the former, you'll never use the latter. A power lift gate with that hands-free technology, waggle your foot and the gate comes up. Rear camera, front sensors, and self-parking, which you enable with this button right here. Just turn that guy on, follow the prompts, let it do the steering, and you're going to be parking like an ace. People will think you know how to drive. The powertrain in the C-Max Hybrid starts off with a 2-liter Atkinson Cycle Lean Burn Gas Engine. That's how all hybrids begin. Sit side saddle, drives the front wheels only through a one-choice only CVT gearbox. Now, 141 horsepower by itself, but it doesn't run by itself. It's got the electric motor attached to it. That gets the horses up to 188 and a commensurate bump in torque as well. We're also looking at a car that weighs 3,600 pounds here, folks. Hundreds more than a Prius or Prius V. Therefore, the 0 to 60 of 8.1, it's fine. The MPG is a little lower than a Prius. 4747 on this C-Max. We're also talking about a car here that's going to have perhaps better crashworthiness because it's got more weight. There have been studies lately that indicate the additional weight of hybrids has made them safer, certainly in terms of serious accidents, fatalities, and injuries. And this car may have a little more of an edge that way. Consider that anecdotal more than documented, but it's an interesting trend we're watching. Also, this car uses lithium-ion batteries. The Prius line still uses the somewhat older nickel metal hydride formulation. Let's go for a ride. Okay, let's drive our little blue friend. 
which I noticed is the same color as one of those blue Slurpees. What flavor is that? Blue? Anyway, the car is, um, it's actually very Prius-like in its feel, in terms of how heavy it feels, how springy it feels, how responsive, things of that nature. You're always aware of the great degree of space in this car. Uh, much like a Prius V, it feels very airy and roomy. It feels like a people mover to me more than a car. These cars began in Europe, by the way. The C-Max started selling in Europe in 2003, where they go in for more kind of practical, compact utility vehicles, more than we do, or at least earlier than we do. And that's why this car has the DNA it has. Now, this car is reporting eh, almost 39 MPG uh, over most of our testing. Uh, remember, the targets are 47, according to EPA. Uh, we're doing our testing here in San Francisco, where you don't go anywhere without encountering a hill for the most part. So I'm going to spot it a few miles per gallon. That means it's doing pretty well, pretty close to estimates. The last thing I'll say is this CVT transmission, your only choice, it feels like a CVT. It's got a degree of kind of vagueness and wandering to it. It feels a little disconnected. Nothing wrong with it. That's just the way CVTs tend to be. And this one is among those that tends to be that way as much as any other. That means that the performance is, um, what? It's modulated as opposed to really giving you a kick when you step on it, which is a little bit disappointing because hybrids have the ability to have really great snap because that electric torque can come in. This one mutes that out in favor, I'm sure, of efficiency. Okay, let's price a C-Max Hybrid SEL CNET style. Starts off a tick below 29 grand delivered. Then go right to the top and just check off package 303A. It rolls in pretty much all the tech toys I showed you. It's a good value for what you're getting and all the technologies work well. Then, optionally, $1,195 for that glass moonroof, also a pretty good value. All in, this car is about 32.7 out the door with a lot of tech toys and a lot of efficiency.